Hey guys, and welcome to part one of a two-part tutorial on how to use research databases. In this part of the tutorial, we're going to be talking about the what, the why, and the how of research databases. So our objectives for this first part of the tutorial will be to first define what a research database is and explain how it's useful. Second of all, we want to understand basic and advanced search methods. And finally, we want to identify ways of saving articles. So first let's talk about what a research database is. A research database is really like kind of like Google for scholarly resources. A database by definition is an organized set of information. The research databases that we'll be using um, contain thousands of abstracts and full text documents. Uh, if you're not sure what an abstract is at this point that's okay because we'll be talking about it in just a minute. Um, some examples of commonly used research databases that uh, you may use this year and also in college are JSTOR, LexisNexis, and EBSCOhost. We'll be focusing primarily on using EBSCOhost because that's where we're going to get lots of our information for uh, our own research. So let's talk about why we should use research da databases instead of just using something like Google. Well, first of all, in research databases, the information is organized um, incredibly well. And we'll kind of talk about how to use that to your advantage in just a minute. Also, research databases have tremendous advanced search capabilities. And they give you abstracts of articles before you look at them. You could read brief summaries of just about every resource on there before you decide whether or not to use those resources, which really comes in handy. It helps save you a lot of time. And finally, and perhaps most importantly, research databases are vast troves of peer-reviewed articles, which is incredibly important for college-level research papers. You don't want to just be using um, Wikipedia or even necessarily Encyclopedia Britannica when you're writing a college-level research paper. You need peer-reviewed research, and you can get that in a research database like EBSCOhost. So how do you use a research database? Well, there are four steps to the process of, of using a database. And these steps don't go in a particular order. At any given time, you may find yourself jumping to a different spot in the uh, research process. But uh, we'll go ahead and just go through them one at a time right now. The process of using a research database is to first search, then review, refine, and save your results. So let's talk about how we search in research databases. First of all, you need to use keywords related to the discipline that you are researching. If I'm researching um, on SOPA, the Stop Online Piracy Act, for example, I need to know lots of keywords and important definitions related to SOPA so that I can search intelligently. We also need to make sure and vary our search terms. If the first time you search for something you, you really don't get any good results, don't give up. Vary the terms that you're, that you're using. And finally, in most cases you're going to want to limit your results to full text results. That's not always going to be the case, and sometimes people like me can help you find full text articles that are not listed in your search results, but uh, in general you are going to want to limit your results to full text. The next step in using a research database is to review our results. So when you get a list of results in a research database, you want to scan the titles. Once you've scanned the titles, if you see something that looks even remotely interesting, you're going to want to read the abstract for that. The abstract is essentially a brief summary of the information in an article. You'll want to save your potentially useful articles for later. That may mean that you email them to yourself. That may mean that you save them to Google Drive. We'll kind of talk about that in a couple minutes here. Um, and you also, as you review your research, want to make note of any new keywords and subject terms that you find. This is incredibly important because oftentimes beginning researchers run into these brick walls where they just can't find the information that they need. Well, in a lot of cases, by simply paying closer attention to the subject terms and the keywords that are used in their discipline, they can break through those, those walls and find um, really great resources. The next step in using a research database is to refine your results. Um, this is where you take those keywords and those subject terms that you found and you now do new searches using them. You're going to use advanced search, search functions at this point, searching by subject, by title, author, uh, type of resource. There's lots of different ways you can do that and I'll show you in the next tutorial. 
You're also going to want to use multiple search terms, and you're going to want to use the words and, or, and not effectively. And again, I'll show that to you in more detail in the second part of this tutorial. Finally, you're going to want to save your results. We've talked about several different ways in class of uh, how to save your results. I highly recommend that you use Google Chrome when using a research database because there are all kinds of ways you can save PDF files and um, HTML files using Google, Google Chrome. If you, have, if you find full text in PDF, you'll want to save that to a USB drive or a Google Drive. Um, if you're using Chrome, you can uh, save HTML full text documents to Google Drive using the print function. And another way to save your results is to simply email articles to yourself. So in the second part of this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to use these four steps in order to effectively search uh, using EBSCOhost. So head on over there right now, and uh, we'll get searching. Thanks.